Hey everyone, Shabim here and welcome back to our next episode in the WWE 2K19 Universe Mode. We are here with Progress Wrestling Chapter 3, I believe, isn't it? I think it is. And here we go then, Alistair Black one-on-one -on -one against Travis Banks. Should this be a pretty fun match, this one? Two guys who are pretty crazy. Some uh, some real strong strikes, that's what I'm expecting from these two. If a voice does sound a bit rough, I've been a bit ill this week. Um, not only that, but uh, I'm recording like, because I've been ill, I've not recorded as much as I hoped to. So I've ended up recording quite a lot in one night and then my throat's bad again. So I do apologise if it sounds a bit rough, but we're fine. We are fine. We're enjoying it. We're going crazy. We've got Alistair Black versus Travis Best. We've got a great show for you tonight, actually. We've got this match. We've got Tag Team Championships. We've got Imperium challenging against Mustache Mountain. Uh, we have got... Pete Dunn one-on-one -on -one against Zack Sabre Jr. Dave Mastiff makes his first defense of the Atlas Championship as he takes on Walter. And our main event, Drew McIntyre, makes his first defense of the Progress Championship as he defends against Pac, who's had two pretty big wins so far, Pac, in this universe mode. Uh, for Progress, anyway, so that should be a pretty interesting one. Alistair Black in with a pin, not enough. Wrenching back at the arm of Travis Banks. Really wrenching at that arm. And just slowing the pace of the match down, keeping him grounded. Alistair Black now front chancer and then a boot right in the face of Travis Banks. Travis now nice belly to belly. A boot in the spine as well. Travis now wrenched at the neck of Alistair Black. Then a boot into the gut as well before wrenching back at the arm. Travis Banks in control this match at this point in time. Banks now stalking Black, who catches him in the boot right in the face, then a boot in the gut as well. Nice takedown there by Travis Banks. But Alistair Black catches him, headlock. Just keeping Banks grounded, but Banks rolls him through. Banks now sending Black into the corner. Goes up top and drops a boot right in the face. Travis Banks now stalking. Oh, Alistair Black and hits him. Is that the Kiwi Crusher, isn't it? Something like that. One, two, and three. And Travis Banks picks up a big victory here against uh, the former. Progress Atlas champion. Big win this is for Travis Banks. Very, very big win. And as you can see, he's incredibly happy with himself as well. Really happy with himself. And here we go then, Progress Tag Team Championships. We have got Mustache Mountain making their second defense. Yeah, they defended them. So they won the belts on the very first show 
against the Grizzled Young Vets. And they uh, successfully retained them on our last show against Gallus. And now they take on Imperium. Of course, uh, Fabian Eichner on the left. And Marcel Bafal on the right. So this should be another very interesting match. Two very, very strong teams. I still can't believe how little Tyler Bate looks like Tyler Bate. I don't know. It just It's weird. See, I wonder who they're going to put on this year's game then. Are they going to put some more of the NXT UK roster on there? They've got quite a lot of the NXT roster to add as well. They've got a lot of people, haven't they? Like Punishment Martinez and Keith Lee and... And hopefully, oh, they're not going to... Are they? Oh, of course they are. Mm. No, they're not, are they? So my brain stopped working there for a second. Yeah, um, I forgot what time of the year it was. <laughs> so uh, obviously, um, they get added. I think anybody who made their debut before WrestleMania is normally on the game. Anybody who debuts shortly after WrestleMania is normally DLC. Um, so I can't see the likes of the new... Breed being part of it, so your Shane Strickland and people like that can't be seen part of it. But people like Keith Lee and Punchment Martinez and Matt Riddle, and um, they're all people we'll see added hopefully. And hopefully, we will see Tyler Bates stay on the game and then uh, Trent be added. I think they should put some of the AEW guys, AEW, <laughs> some of the NXT UK guys on there as well. So people like Travis Banks, people like Walter. People like um, Trent and them sort of people. I'm, I'm sure they should definitely be on there as well. Hopefully. We'll have to wait and see what they get up to, I suppose, won't we? We're going to lose a lot of people as well, aren't we, I suppose? You're going to lose um, Ty Dillinger, Chris Jericho. I don't know. I doubt they'll have Jericho on the game, but there's still a possibility they might have a classical Jericho on there just because it sells the game a bit. I don't know. It's a tricky one, isn't it? I, I severely doubt they will, but there's a chance they'll keep him anyway so we have got Marcel Bafal in the middle of the ring alongside Tyler Bate Tyler now dropping his body weight in the back of the arm of Bafal another big one into the arm as well into the pin one well nowhere near enough is it And it looks like uh, Mustache Mountain are in firm control at this point. Trent getting a scoop slam on Fabian Eichner, but Bafal now up, went for the moonsault crossbody, completely missed. Bafal getting taken down there by... Sorry, Trent getting... Blah, 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 Tyler Bate getting taken down by myself. Bafal. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. I recorded too much. My voice has stopped working. My brain has stopped working a long time ago. Fabian Eichner now. German suplex on Trent Seven. As I don't know what's happened to myself. Bafal. He just got stuck in a scarecrow pose there for a moment. Fabian Eichner now bringing Trent back up to his feet. Went for the, the kick in the head. Trent avoided it. Trent now taking Fabian Eichner up into a powerbomb. Wow. Big, big powerbomb. Nice drop kick as well. And for the second, it's been blocked off. Oh my god, they've done it. Imperium have got it. Imperium nicked it. Fabian Eichner able to block off Trent. And that allowed... Marcel Bafal to finish off Tyler Bay. We've got brand new tag team champions here this evening. Well, out of nowhere that was. Wow. What a match. That was uh, a bit out of the blue. I weren't expecting that match to finish so quickly once again. But there was the pin by Bafal and you saw Eichner... Had managed to block off Trent, who went for the dropkick. Eichner slapped him away and then sort of got in between him and the pin. And we have got brand new tag team champions, Imperium, 
for the win, ladies and gentlemen. It could be a very good night for Imperium. We've got Walter fighting later on for the Atlas Championship as well. Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bafal, Tag Team Champions. go Pete Dunn versus Zack Sabre Jr. Should be a pretty cool match this one. Both guys are well as I was say potential uh, progress champions. Pete Dunn of course was the progress champion. Won it at the very first show defeating Walter then losing it the very next night against Drew McIntyre. But now he needs to start to get some of his momentum back up and he can only do that with a a big win here against Zack Sabre Jr., who so far has lost in the Atlas Championship match. Of course, uh, Alistair Black winning that one. Uh, but then he did get a victory in the last episode against Drew Gulak. So, uh, yeah, there's still uh, a lot of opportunity for him. He needs a win here, though, doesn't he? Both these guys desperate for a win, to be honest with you. Both could really do with this momentum to get themselves back in the championship picture. We now know, um, because somebody told me, I wasn't aware of this to be honest with you, we know the Atlas Championship is sort of the opposite of a Cruiserweight Championship, so it's designed for people over a certain weight. Um, so we'll be utilising those people more often. So we're going to have, uh, like I said, Walter fighting for the championship tonight against the champion Dave Mastiff. Uh, Killian Dane is another man who will probably get involved in that and uh, will bring some talent in from America as we always do. As something that happens a lot in the UK is you'll see people get imported and they'll be the big names that help sell the shows out. So we'll get a few bigger names here and there. Try to think of who else there would be in this uh, roster who could go for that. I think uh, everyone else is more considered a cruiserweight really. Um... Yeah, apart from Killian, Dane, Dave Mastiff and Walter, I'm struggling for big guys. Maybe Cesaro, maybe Sheamus, Rusev. Yeah, they're all... Um, it's not a bad shout, actually. Those are probably better names, aren't they, thinking about it? Maybe even Trent Seven, someone who could go for it at some point. Pete Dunn wrenching there at the arm of Zack Sabre Jr. It's normally Zack who goes into these sort of things and... Maybe that's not the sort of battle you want to get into with Zack, is, uh, is a submission technical based battle really. Zack sending Pete Dunn into the ropes, Pete Dunn now sending Zack into the corner, a nice running clothesline to the back. Dunn now with the big boots and the guts of Zack. Dunn now dropping a big boot in the gut once again of Zack and some big ones. Oh, stiff strike right in the side of the face. Pete Dunn now wrenching back of the arm. Dropping the double knees in the spine. Nice drop kick there by Zack right into the knees of Pete Dunn. Now lock it in that. It's like a cross arm bar, but he's got the leg hooked as well. Pete Dunn rolling free. And I don't think, just as much as I don't think Pete Dunn wants to get into a submission or technical battle against Zack Sabre Jr. I don't think Zack Sabre Jr. wants to get into a striking battle with Pete Dunn. That seems uh, not the best idea, to be honest with you. Maybe if we have got the Atlas Championship then as a... Um, Super heavyweight belt. Maybe we should look at bringing in a cruiserweight belt as well. I know uh, the company I used to watch a lot in the UK, Southside Wrestling, they have a championship called the Speed Kings belt. Um, and they have a Speed Kings tournament once a year, which is pretty cool. We could do that, actually, couldn't we? Yeah, maybe we could do that, actually. That's not a bad shout. Try and utilize some Southside in here as well. 
I don't think ICW has a cruiserweight belt, as far as I'm aware. Either that, or we could just create our own belt. I mean, we're in the uh, NXT UK universe, where we had the we had the British lightweight championship. Then we could use that sort of thing again, couldn't we? Pete Dunne now dropping into the pin, then on Zack Sabre Jr. Only enough for the two count. Getting closer and closer, though. Dunn now flipping Zack Sabre Jr. over. Looking to lock in some sort of surfboard drop in the boots in the back of the knee of Zack. Now stalking the grounded Zack as he slowly gets back up to his feet. Looking for the bitter end. Dropping him face first. There's the pin. One, two, and three. It's a strong win here for Pete Dunne. He needed that after losing the championship last video in progress. He needed a win here to get himself back on track. He's going to have to fight his way back into number one contendership, of course. But a win here is definitely going to help his cause. Definitely going to help his cause. And of course, that bitter end was exactly what he needed. So there we go. A great win here for Pete Dunne against Zack Sabre Jr. That's a massive win, that is. Huge, huge win. Like I said, it's going to get him straight back into the championship picture. But of course, he's going to have to fight his way back in. There's still a lot of other people that want to be in there as well. Right, there we go then. Here we go then, the Progress Atlas Championship. Dave Mastiff making his first championship defense as he goes one-on-one -on -one against Big Bad Walter. This is going to be a really good match. I can feel it right now. Two absolute behemoths of men. Incredible strength. It's going to be a really interesting match. I really want to see who comes out on top of this because Mastiff is his first championship defense. However, Walter is a very, very uh, formidable opponent for anybody. Mastiff hands the belt over to the referee. And we are ready to go. Mastiff versus Walter. The bell goes. We are underway. Ma, this is this is crazy, isn't it? Walter starting things off super strong. Clubbing down Walter, uh, clubbing down Mastiff, shall I say? Nice forearm there by Walter, taking Mastiff down once again. Big elbow in the top of the head. Mastiff fighting back there with the right hand. Now Mastiff taking Walter up and sends him over the top, crashing to the ground. Mastiff now stamping on the back of Walter. Walter now looking to try and bring Mastiff up, but Mastiff fighting back with the strikes and a big knee in the gut as well, taking Walter up onto the top. Oh, just pushing him to the ground outside. Wow. Walter crashed and burned on the outside there. And now Mastiff just sends him into the barrier as well. It's been brutal this match so far, actually. Walter battling still on the outside, slides back in the ring. Of course, champion's advantage is here, though.
Both guys back in the ring. Walter slamming Mastiff down. And dropping his body weight across the chest. Nice stiff forearm. Now into a backbreaker by Walter. Dropping his body weight once again. Across Mastiff. Walter just keeping Mastiff grounded now. Walter now trying to bring Mastiff back up, but Mastiff playing possum. Mastiff on the apron, and Walter tries to catch him with the right hand. Mastiff now rolls him through. Big knee in the gut, a discus lariat taking the head off of Walter into the... No, not into the bin. Brings it back up to his feet. Mastiff with a cannonball. Mastiff now into the pin. Walter's hands under the rope. Referee doesn't see it, but thankfully Walter does kick out and stops any... Uh, Potential dodgy finishes here. Mastiff gets caught with a big elbow in the gut. By Walter into the belly to belly slam. Pinned by Walter. One. Two. Honey, a two count. Big boot in the spine as well. Went for the clothesline. Mastiff caught him. Takes him down in the STO. Walter sending Mastiff crashing over his shoulder. Walter flattens Mastiff. Who's back up on his feet though. Walter now. Pushes Mastiff away. Mastiff gets him. With a knee in the gut. Walter now bringing Mastiff back up to his feet. But Mastiff was playing possum. Walter now taking Mastiff up onto his shoulder. Going to drop him. Rikishi driver style. Wow. Surely he's going to go for the pin. He does. One. Two. And three in a brand new Atlas champion here. Wow. I knew that was going to be a good match, and it was. It was a very good match. Mastiff and Walter, two super heavyweights here. Nobody has successfully retained this championship ever. I mean, it was won by Alistair Black on the first show. He then lost it to uh, Dave Mastiff on our second show. And now Mastiff loses it to Walter on our third show. Such great ability. But Walter is the new Progress Atlas champion. There we go. Two brand new champions out of two tonight. We've got one more match left. One more championship up for grabs. Will it be three out of three? And here we go, the main event of the evening progress championship match. Drew McIntyre makes his first defense. 
as he takes on Pack. It's been pretty interesting. Like I said, Pack is uh, fully in form at this point in time. He's uh, had two matches so far, defeated Will Ospreay one on one, and uh, defeated Mandrews and Rockstar Spud in a triple threat match. So he has looked pretty good so far, Pack. Drew McIntyre, though the same. He won a fatal four-way match against Sheamus, Balor, and Cesaro on show one. And then won the Progress Championship on show two. So both these guys are undefeated in two very difficult matches. So this should be another very fun match. Two quite differing styles. Of course, Drew McIntyre much more stronger. Much more uh, of a striker, I suppose. Whereas... Of course, Adrian Neville, or Pack, if you will. Much quicker. Uh, as you can see, exactly there. Case in point, much quicker. Uh, also very technical and submission-based as well. So, a good mix of styles here. As Pack instantly sending McIntyre to the outside. McIntyre now with Pack up and oh, slams him into the apron. Nice spinning heel kick here by Pack on Drew McIntyre. Nice forearm there by Pack. McIntyre taking him down. Nice clothesline right into the apron. As the battle still commences on the outside. The referee is counted, of course. Champion's advantage is in place. So uh, if either of these two men get counted out, then McIntyre does walk away champion no matter what. Nice take down there by Pack once again. Bringing McIntyre back up to his feet. Big elbows. Pack sending McIntyre once again over the top. And this match once again descends to the outside. Seems to be over and over and over again this match seems to descend to the outside. See Pack there just with the uh, elbow in the back of the head now into the front chancery. Dropping his boot right in the arm of McIntyre. McIntyre rolls him through. McIntyre now with Pack in the corner. Now wrenching back at the arm of McIntyre. He's close to the ropes. The referee's obviously going to break it. Pack rolls McIntyre through. Pack now waiting for McIntyre to get back up to his feet. McIntyre catching the big clothesline right across the face. Dragging Pack back into the ring. Can McIntyre be the first man to successfully retain the Progress Championship? McIntyre now flipping Pack over, dropping an elbow right on the inside of the leg. McIntyre dropping Pack once again, now bringing him back up to his feet. It's a real back and forth match, this one. It's aggravating because they've both got very similar looks. It's difficult to tell which one's which sometimes. Pack now slowly rolls underneath the ropes, trying to uh, hold on as McIntyre now chases him down. McIntyre bringing Pack back in the hard way with the uh, suplex. McIntyre sending Pack into the corner.
McIntyre now with a pin on Pack. Only enough for a two count. McIntyre now backing into the corner, stalking. And boom, the Claymore is missed. DDT by Pack. Now into the pin. One, two, only a two count. The match still continues on. Pack now sending McIntyre into the corner. McIntyre avoiding. McIntyre taking Pack down once again. Into the corner. Nice big running forearm by Pack. And here is Finn Balor. Okay, distracting Pack. That is very interesting. Not as in not as that that's crazy. The the way that Finn Balor just rolled down to the ring was incredibly crazy. That was oh my god, Finn Balor's broken. Well done, game. Well freaking done. I have a way, though. Finn Balor interfering in this main event here at Progress Wrestling. Not something that I told the game to do because you can't. You can't tell the game to do interference in, uh, in championship matches. I love that Finn Balor slide down to the ring. That was pretty impressive. Nice corkscrew moonsault there by Paku. See, that could be interesting. I'd love to have a Pack versus Finn Balor championship match, you know. I'd love to. Pack now wrenching back at the arm of Drew McIntyre. Drew fighting back with the right hand right in the gut. McIntyre now catching Pack with a belly to belly slam. McIntyre bringing Pack once up. He went for the uh, the head, but completely missed it. Now Pack slides at the back. I think Finn is still broken on the outside. I think, isn't he? It's Pack now wrenching back at the arm. McIntyre rolling Pack through. Pack now taking McIntyre up into a power bomb. One, two. Oh wow! Oh God! Wow! Rolls it through though into the Boston Crab. Will this be enough? Will he tap? He's holding on. He is holding on. Pack now with the boot in the spine. Now dropping a boot in the back of the arm of McIntyre as well. And Pack now middle of the ring. Locking in the rings of Saturn. And it is a tap out. And it is a victory for Drew. Uh, for, for Drew. For Pack against Drew McIntyre. Pack is the brand new progress champion. And that has just worked out perfectly, hasn't it? Worked out perfectly because with Finn Balor interfering in this match and trying to distract Pack, Pack goes on and wins the championship. Progress chapter four, easy. Pack versus Balor. Uh, for the progress title, I don't know, let's make it best two of three falls. There we go. Absolutely fantastic. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is literally falling into my lap here because you can't have people interfere in uh, championship matches. The game does not allow you. So, um, the fact that it's done that itself is fantastic for us. I don't know why it won't allow it. I think it's better because you can create some great feuds off of people that are interfering in championship matches. And there we go then, brand new progress champion. Three brand new champions here tonight out of three matches. Wow.
That is uh, really cool, actually. And that is the end of our progress show. Of course, I hope you have enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, then please do hit a like. And, of course, subscribe if you would like to see some more. It's going to be pretty fun moving forward here. I think uh, Pack versus Balor, best two out of three falls, is the main event of Chapter 4 of Progress. is going to be absolutely amazing. Of course, Walter will defend his Atlas Championship again. Think that Drew is someone who fits into that bracket as well. So I think we've got some cool stuff coming up for you. Of course, if you've not seen it already, we had our New Japan Dominion pay-per-view yesterday. And we've also had... No, not Progress. This is Progress. Uh, Pro Wrestling Gorilla doing a Mystery Vortex yesterday and today as well. So lots of 2K19 action for you if you're interested this weekend. Right, I've been Chevy Gamer. Thank you much for watching. And I'll see you very, very soon for our next episode of WE2K19. Bye.